Hello, I'm Lieutenant Kevin Dillon. Today I'm with my friends from policemag.com. Many times I get emails throughout the year pertaining to, Kev, you always talk about integration of training. But believe it or not, I get several emails inquiring, well, what do you mean by integration of training? And so we're going to talk a little bit about that today. The strategy is how to implement different weapon systems and disciplines within law enforcement combatives altogether. So quite often, if you ever realize when you're in training, say it's baton training, and then you might have somebody in a protective suit. When they get in the protective suit, it seems like the student realizes all she refers to is back to a striking instrument. Or if they're, or they're spraying with OC, all they're doing is spraying with the OC. We have to learn to be able to integrate. I'll give you an example. For example, 2006, the FBI released a, the study called Violent Encounters. With that, they did a study pertaining to how many agencies across the country are really giving their officers training when it comes to physical skills or combatives. Unfortunately, far below the average was the fact that many agencies are not. If they are, the majority of them ones were trying to say, okay, we'll give you eight hours a year, maybe 12, maybe 16 hours a year, but you have to do baton training, you have to do handcuff training, you have to do OC training, you have to do taser training leaving very, very little room to implement your physical skills training. That makes it difficult. And quite often, we have different trainers with different disciplines often having different principles and concepts behind them. So quite often, this is what I'm getting pretty much, is that the student is confused because one trainer will say do this way, the other trainer will say do something differently. This is just an idea to integrate these concepts. I'll give you an example. I'm going to start with Bob here. Guys, if there's a couple training devices I will recommend, this happens to be one of them. In my house, I have several. I have one of these, and I have a heavy bag, and of course, I have some other bags. This is a very valuable component, a very valuable piece of equipment, because obviously, it's lifelike. It's three-dimensional. So you, have to, you learn to understand and see the targets. Yeah, you don't have the arms, but I'll show you how you can add that, as well as the three-dimensional three component here. But quite often, if you see people using their baton train and they do strikes, you'll see forward strike, they do a forward strike, forward strike, they do a forward strike, all right? Well, I want you to learn to add components to it. So say, for example, he goes to grab, you clear it out of the way, hit, kick, move forward, or whatever. That's simple ways to start adding to it with a life-size life, life three-dimensional target. Practice these drills. First, push back here. Forward spin here. Two hand, forward drive down here. So now you're teaching your students that this is not just a striking instrument. It's got many different components. But if we're using it, a drill such as this, I want you one. First, palm heel. When you palm heel, you notice that my shoulder goes right back to my six o'clock. It's not here chamber and hit is one motion here, one motion here, one motion here, all right? Now from here, one motion here, forward, all right? Throwing a kick, drive them down to the ground. Instead of strike, strike. When they have this instrument, half the time they think that's all they need to use. Have them do other things. You don't want to do too many jabs because you don't want to really strike too much with this. Sometimes it's better to throw it up here with an open hand. Distract them here, forward strike here, kick the leg, drive them down to the ground. All right, let me show you on one of my partners what I'm talking about. Martin, what I want you to do is I want you to stand right behind Bob here. Put your chest right here. So now, Martin, you're going to reach over the top of him towards me. All right? Reach and grab me. So now you get used to something coming at you, striking a bag, boom, moving forward. Ready? Grab. One, moving, a, dealing with a lifelong threat. Striking the bag, kicking, driving forward. Two, here, and so on. That's how you can add different components using uh, a training device like that with a partner. But now, let's take Bob out of the way, and now it'll just be me and my partner. Say, for example, here, this is another strategy to implement the tactics 
consistent with your hand-to-hand, -hand, your baton, whatever else might be. Say, for example, Martin goes to grab me. First of all, never let anybody touch you, even in the training environment. But for this angle, grab right there with you. And he grabs, that's what strong side block, right? Or what we call strong side strike. Strong side block would be this, go. Stationary, solidified, waiting to block the defense. All your strikes or all your blocks are really strikes. If you think of a strike, you'll deliver it in a fashion as if you're striking. So one move becomes both defensive and offensive. So for example, he grabs here, he grabs my throat, one. Clear it out of the way. Strike here, pow! Simulate you just got hit there. Now from here, follow up with a kick. And now, I'll keep him on screen here for a second. Let's try this. Because I'm going to do that whole the combination for you. All right? This is just one combination. You can do it very slow. Develop it nice and static. I mean, it's very static-like. Systematic. One, two, three. Develop the, me the, the mechanisms of, or the mechanics of the move first. Once you develop the mechanics of the move, then you can put them in this protective suit and start to a little bit more dynamics. But one particular idea is how to integrate these things here. He grabs the throat. Implement what you've learned with the strong side strike or block. Pivot it. Strike here. That's going to cause him to, to buckle that area. From here, throw the kick back. Now you can see him already going back. Now all I'm going to do is step forward. Bam! Drive him right down to the ground. Come on up again, Martin. Let's start from all the way over here. Because you can tell he's going to go a little bit with this one. Again, just an idea to show where we're going with this. Now, say, for example, we're here. You're in a drop and hang position. It's kind of a bar area. It's downtown. People are clearing. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. All right, everybody, you got to move. Everybody get out of here. Out of the crowd comes some heavily intoxicated individual. He goes to grab you. He grabs you. One. Here. Strike. Boom. Kick him back a little bit. You see how he's already going. Now I'm just going to step forward and do what we call a drive down. Bam. Now from here, I'm simply going to drop my knee on his adductor, which is this muscle. Boom. Causing his hand to reach to that. Right? Yank him over. And now how we got into a lockup position. Now I don't want you necessarily... I don't want you necessarily focus maybe on this particular combination. There's multiple combinations. This combination is simply strong side block, set up, hit, kick the leg out a little bit, step forward, drive him down to the ground. It's a lot more effective. Strike, strike, strike. So when you're starting to integrate hand-to-hand -hand technique, here, 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 now you're realizing it's just part of your curriculum. It's not the only thing available to you. How many times have you been on YouTube, Bluetooth, PurpleTube, whatever it might be, and we see officers doing this? Why? We know they're going into that perseverance, that goofy loop, the same manipulation. If we don't train them for different options, what do you think we're going to do under stress? For how you train, so shall you fight. So today's tactics and strategies. The strategy is to integrate the different components of police combatives into your curriculum. The tactics of how to do it is to add specific tactics, combinations, and strategies. All right? For example, Martin, why don't you come over here one more time? This time, you're going to grab my throat. I'm here, drop and hang, he grabs the throat. As he here, that comes right up. And now just, bam, you can have them start to go through just the same motions they've already learned. Again, strong side block or grab. So you got this one, this one here. What do you got? Horizontal. Wow. Then you got a strong side block. Boom. Then you got a strike here. Then you can do a kick and then you can drive them down. Another one similar to this. Another tactics and strategies to implement this. Say I'm here. I'm in a crowd and I'm in a closed mode position. Now, out of the crowd comes Martin in a very aggressive manner. He comes at me in a very aggressive manner. I only have time to respond. Here, strike, now it's out. 
Watch that again. All right. He comes out. Strike. It's out. All right. Now, now to add more fighting components with that, Martin, come back at me. Strike. Hit and out. So you see now how I'm adding more to it? Let's try that one again. He comes at me here. Strike. Hit. He's out. Boom. Remember, fighting is a two-handed art. Actually, four-limbed art. So today's tactics or strategies and tactics. The strategy is start to implement all these concepts together. Let's take our OC. If you're practicing training with OC, spray them with the OC. Simulate that it doesn't work. Have the, the suspect move in. If we're integrating taser, simulate tasing the suspect. He goes down, rips him out, now he's back on his feet. If we don't create these neurological programs within a training environment, when it comes under stress in the street, they're not going to reflect and immediately respond to that level unless they've been there before. In closing, start to integrate as much as possible whatever combative system you have, integrate it with your baton training. Whatever combative system you have, integrate it with your taser training. Integrate your taser training with your baton training. Because you might realize that you tase a suspect, he rips it out. All right, you might realize, okay, I'm switching hands. This is more of the appropriate weapon. So integration of weapon system is also important. You might be drawn on, on your suspect, boom. Then you might have to holster real quick and go to a different weapon, another method of integration. Let's keep these separations away and let's start to bleed everything together. Because and when it comes to police combatives, they all have to be integrated. I'm Kevin Dillon. I'll see you next time on Police Mag Strategies and Tactics. If you need me, you can reach me at policecombat.com. Thank you very much.